Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World. Today, we're here in Larrick on the Shetland Islands in northern Scotland. And today, what we have for you are some of the common mistakes that tourists make when they come here to Scotland because this is a fantastic country. You're really going to enjoy it. But there's a few kind of mistakes, faux pas, things you might want to know before you come here so you don't make those mistakes so you can have a better time when you're here. And the first mistake I think tourists make when they come here is they don't buy the passes. Look, when you're going to go see the sites, a lot of times there's passes that will include multiple sites that you can go see that'll be on one ticket. Maybe you'll get a two-day pass or you can buy a membership. There's Historic Scotland, there's the National Trust for Scotland, and they'll actually sell passes for you that'll get you in the entrance into all kinds of really great sites. And the thing is, if you're going to see more than like two of the sites, it pays for itself. If you just get like a short, like, you know, traveler's ticket kind of stuff, it's well worth doing it. So make sure you're saving some money that way. Don't leave money on the table, okay? Now, the second mistake we see tourists make when they come here is they think that everyone will be glad to take their Scottish pounds when they leave Scotland. For those of you who don't know, you use the British pound here in Scotland as a currency, but there's also special notes from Scottish banks, from the Royal Bank of Scotland, the Bank of Scotland, Clydesdale Bank, that are Scottish pounds. So you can have four different versions of a 20 pound note or a 10 pound note. And the thing is, when you leave Scotland, not everybody really likes the Scottish pounds. Now, everywhere in Scotland, people will take it. In most places in England, they'll take them as well. Some people might not, like they might not be too happy with it, but it's just one of those things to think about. But the big issue is when you leave the UK and you try to exchange them at an exchange house, like if you're in Hungary going there and trying to exchange, they might not take them. So it's best when you're leaving to try to get some of the, the pounds to say from Bank of England instead of the Bank of Scotland, Royal Bank of Scotland or, or Clydesdale Bank. So just have the heads up on that one. Now, my next mistake actually is going to deal with Edinburgh because I know most of the tourists who come to Scotland just go to Edinburgh and kind of take off. And so I think a good mistake I see people make is when they see the tourist map of Edinburgh, they think it's flat there. Look, you need to understand that tourist map of Edinburgh makes it look so simple to get around, but you have some pretty big hills you're going to have to deal with when you're there. So make sure before you come to Scotland, Practice up on some hiking and some walking because you're going to have a little hill to go up that Royal Mile. It starts here and ends up here, okay? So do have a heads up for that one. Now, the next mistake we see tourists make when they come here is buying a kilt. Look, if you want to buy a kilt, that's great, fantastic. Go ahead, help the Scottish economy. I know they appreciate it, so do that. But the thing is, is one, when are you going to wear a kilt outside of Scotland, okay? That's one of the things, because they're not cheap to get. Like, you're going to spend some money to get a nice kilt. And the thing is, is don't just buy one randomly. If you have Scottish history or Scottish ancestry like we do, we have multiple families that are Scottish in our ancestry. So we can choose different kind of, you know, patterns or tartans that we could wear for, for our kilts. The thing is, if you have a history and you want to buy one, find out which clan you are and get that one because you don't want to have the wrong one out there also a lot of times you'll see tourists that'll buy them and they have no clue how to wear them so make sure if you do buy one don't make the mistake of not having them teach you how to wear it so you actually can wear it the right way and kind of going along with that is this mistake that people think that scots really wear kilts all the time look they, they don't wear kilts all the time it's more like if they work at the tourism industry they might have it on or if there's like a formal gathering like a wedding or something like that then they might wear them. But in general, yeah, you're not seeing too many kilts around, all right? Another mistake that tourists make when they come here to Scotland is they just go to Edinburgh and Glasgow with maybe a day trip to Stirling in between, and then they take off. You really need to get out and explore Scotland. This place is gorgeous. We're here in the Shetland Islands, and you know, seeing the cliffs up here, seeing all the islands, the coastline, seeing the, the stone structures, the blocks and stuff like that. It's so cool trying to go find Nessie at Loch Ness, going through the Isle of Skye and see the waterfalls there. Oh my gosh, the formations there, going through the highlands. It's just such a beautiful country, and you got to get out there and enjoy it. And the thing is, though, most people just stick Edinburgh, Glasgow, maybe Stirling, and take off. You need to get out more. And I think the reason why is actually probably our next mistake. And that mistake is people give up on the thought of driving here in Scotland. Once they hear they drive on the left side. I cannot tell you how many people have written to us and called us and talked to us saying, I'd love to go to Scotland, but I'm scared to drive on the left hand side of the road. So don't come. The thing is, just don't worry. What I recommend, watch some videos online about driving on the left side. That will make you feel better. Take your time when you're here. Have patience. Concentrate. There's no filming yourself. Look, I, I'm, I'm driving on the other side of the road. No, you're not doing that, all right? Don't do those things. Focus on the road. 
Get a good GPS for the car. The phone ones aren't as good as the car ones, so get that. So you feel more comfortable driving around and it will make it a lot easier because believe me, there's so many castles and, and sites to go see throughout the country that you can't really get to very well with public transportation or can't go to at all that you really, really need to have your own transportation. So don't make the mistake of not renting a car. Now, another common mistake I see tourists make is they don't even give Scottish food a chance. Look, Scotland actually has some really good food. The seafood here, the salmon, the mussels, the scallops, the other fish, I mean, the white fish we've had here. I mean, there's been so much good food here and you're gonna eat very well in Scotland. So don't be like, oh, going to Scotland. Looks like I'm gonna lose 10 pounds unless I drink my dinner. No, look, you can eat really well. I mean, the seafood's great. The beef here is outstanding. The lamb, oh. Oh, you gotta do the lamb when you're here. And there's all kinds of other fun stuff. You can have the local whiskey that's here. You have the iron brew, the, the Scottish soda you, that I'll talk about later. <laughs> you have that. And there's all kinds of really good Scottish traditional cuisine you can have and enjoy when you're here. And I think enjoying that food is so important that there's another mistake that tourists make. And that is not making reservations for dinner on Friday and Saturday nights, or not making reservations for dinner during the Edinburgh Festival in Edinburgh in August, or not making reservations for dinner anytime you're in a small town during tourist season. Cause there's a limited number of restaurants and spots and stuff like that. And if you wanna guarantee you have a place to eat or there's a restaurant you really wanna to go to have your Shetland mussels or your Orkney scallops or whatever, you gotta make sure you're making those reservations. Even if you're in a small town by a popular tourist place, we were staying in Plockton a few years ago and there like we booked our accommodation four months before we actually were gonna stay there. And the lady's like, hey, I'm gonna make your reservations at this restaurant so you know you have a place to eat when you're here because there's limited spots. So don't forget to make those reservations for dinner when you are coming, okay? And it's not just in big cities, it's in small towns as well. Also probably don't forget to uh, make hotel reservations if you're gonna be going to smaller towns and going to drive around the country so you can kind of plan out your route before you go so you're a bit more comfortable with that drive. Now changing topics for a little bit, I think another important mistake not to make when you're here is don't make the mistake of calling a Scotsman an Englishman they're, they're not gonna appreciate it. A Scot is a Scot, English is English. Make sure you separate them because they will let you know that they are not English, they're Scottish. You might be able to get away with British, that's okay, because it's part of Great Britain, but just know, Scottish, Scotland, we're Scottish, okay? So just know that one. And one of the ways you'll be able to tell they're Scottish instead of English is the accent. And that's another mistake I think tourists make, is they go, hey, I'm going to Scotland, they speak English, I'm gonna understand them just fine. Look, that's a mistake right there. The farther you go north in Scotland, the stronger the accent gets. And you'll see in some movies when the people are speaking like Scot Scottish English, you know, in Scotland in the north, they might actually put subtitles down at the bottom to help people out. You might need a few times through, excuse me, could you repeat that? Sorry, what did you say? So don't make the mistake of getting upset because you can't understand them. Just take some time and a smile. And no, you're not the only tourist that didn't quite understand everything they said, okay? Now, the next mistake I wanna talk about has to deal with when you're driving around, and that is not taking snacks with you. Look, you need to have some snacks in your car because a lot of times you have long drives, there's not like there's no shops along the way, no pub along the way, and you're gonna get hungry, there might not be anything around. So make sure you throw some bags of stuff in. Get some of the local snacks when you're here, you know, get the, the caramel wafers or stuff like that when you're here. There's a lot of good Scottish candy and treats, the Scottish shortbread. You have these things that sit well in your car, no big deal, and you can just nibble on them, grab some drinks as well, it's very important. So you have that. Another mistake I see people make is they don't look up the local festivals. Look, Scotland has so many crazy fun festivals you can go to all throughout the year that, you know what, take a gander, visit Scotland, on their website I'm sure talks about all the festivals around the country and see if you're coming in October or January or June, what's going on? Is there stuff I could come see? Apelia, that's where they burn a, lo a Viking longboat here in Shetland and Lerwick. They do that the, the last Tuesday in January. You wanna go see some Highland games? When is that going on? When can I see some of those? Maybe you want to go see a football match or, or a rugby match. Or heck, you want to go down to the Fringe Festival in August. You have that in Edinburgh. There's so many cool festivals that a lot of people, they're coming, I'm coming to see the sites, but don't realize to meet the fun people here in Scotland, it's the best way is to go to the festivals and meet them there. So don't forget to check out those festivals, okay? And my last mistake I see tourists make when they come here to Scotland is when they get that iron brew, you know, the Scottish soda, they see it and they think it's orange. Look, iron brew is the color orange, but it's the taste of bubble gum. So just be ready for that. Cause the first time you have it, you're like, oh, I'm gonna have a nice orange soda. And you're like, oh, 
that's bubblegum. gum. That's kind of weird, but it grows on you. Don't worry, you're gonna like it when you're here. So make sure you try it, but just realize it may be the color orange, but it's not really the flavor orange, all right? So I hope this helps you be better prepared for coming to Scotland. It is a fantastic place. Whether you're here in the Shetland Islands or you're down in Edinburgh, or you're going to St. Andrews to play some golf, I wish you all the best. Have a great time here in Scotland.